All right, let's go ahead and get started. Have your homework out. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Page 97, you had three graph grids. On one of them, you plotted six points for numbers 1 through 6. On one of them, you graphed the lines for 13 and 16. On the other, you graphed the lines for 17 and 20. And I call it a graph grid, uh, but the technical term for it, uh, there's actually two different ways we could describe it there, uh, Gavin, would be... What do we call this thing we graph on? I mean, it's graph paper, but like the graph paper doesn't do us any good until we draw some stuff on there. Uh, what do we call that thing we draw? It's called the Cartesian something. Plane, the Cartesian plane, also called anyone the coordinate plane, right? The Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane. And the Cartesian or coordinate plane consists of two number lines called, back to Gavin for redemption, axes, and uh, which one's which? Uh, which axis is which? Maddie? Yeah, which one's which? <laughs> yeah, she looks at the posters like, the X one's like this and the Y one's like this. Now, uh, here's a question for you. Something that goes like this, we would say is vertical. And something like this, we would call it is horizontal, right? Longitude, latitude, no, that's geography class. It's vertical and horizontal. And of course, those number lines meet at a point that we call the origin. It's the zero of each number line. And uh, so, of course, from zero, the x-axis class goes off to infinity and back to negative infinity. The y-axis goes up to and down to there we go. And um, these two crisscrossing number lines form four different sections of the graph that we refer to as Quadrant. quadrants. And um, as we look at the four quadrants, the quadrant over here class would be quadrant two, two quadrant one, quadrant four, and quadrant three. three. Um, every point that we could plot has an exact location because every point we plot lines up with a particular value on the x-axis. The x value of a point, Maddie, is called the, but without the without the CV, abscissa. There we go. And then the uh, ever that same point would also line up with something, some value on the y-axis. We call the y value the. Ordinate. He was just looking back in his notes. I'm going to be ready for Mark Washington. Uh, ordinate. And uh, we put the abscissa with the ordinate. It gives us the exact location or that point's coordinates. Good. And that's what we were practicing plotting there. Now, yesterday we looked at how we could take two or three points and um, by uh, drawing a line through them, we could actually graph equations. What do we call equations that graph as straight lines, Gavin? Linear equations, good. And how can we tell just by looking at an equation, hey, that's a linear equation. We're going to get a straight line. Noah? If it's already graphed, obviously, hey, that's a line. Hey, that's a linear. Okay, but what if you looked at the equation itself? You haven't graphed it yet, but you're going to. How would you know that that equation is going to be linear? Maddie? Hmm, bracket. Well, it does have to have both x. Well, technically, um, you could have a 0 and y, which make a y non-existent. But the x and y that are there, assuming you see them both, would both have to be anyone? You just looked it up. How did you blow it? <laughs> both have to be the first power. They both are the first power. No squares, no cubes, no nothing. So class, how do we spot a linear equation? x and y are both to the first power. And that gives us our equation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the homework now, and um, we'll start down on this end of the chalkboard. All right, and of course, as you draw, make sure that we put at the ends of the axes those arrow heads to indicate going to infinity and negative infinity. Make sure we label the positive end of the x-axis x, the positive end of the y-axis y. We don't have to put anything at the negative ends of the axes. We want to label increments on the graph class. I said we want to label every 
three units. So remember, this does not count as one. The origin is zero. zero. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we so forth if we have space. Of course, negatives going backward, negative going downward. Uh, check your graph on uh, number one. You've got uh, six points that should be on there. Point number one was at the point two, three, over two, and then up three. How many had that for your point? One. Point number two should have been over four, down one in the fourth quadrant. We have that for our point two. Point number three should have been over nothing, just down seven on the negative half of the y-axis. Do we have our point three down here? All right. Point number four should have been over six, up nothing. So right here on the positive x-axis. Uh, negative five, nine. Oh, I just barely think I can fit that there's six. So there would be nine right there. And that's our point, uh, point five, way up there at the top of the second quadrant. All right, and then zero, zero, of course, class, we call the origin. And so point number six would have been the origin. Do we have all six of those points plotted correctly? Excellent. Let's move on then to a couple of linear equations. And uh, you set up a section in your notes for graphing linear equations. And I told you there's going to be three different ways that we graph. But the first method I gave you was to graph linear equations by what method, Brecken? Maddie, help him. The method we used yesterday was called graphing by anyone? Chart. Chart table is what I call it. Graphing by the chart or graphing by table. Where we're going to set up an XY table. Now what that means is the other methods aren't going to use an XY table, okay? Which means they're going to be faster and easier and more fun. Uh, but anyway, this is the slow, painful method that we had to use last night. On number 13, for instance, where we had to graph y equals negative x positive 10. Um, and uh, the key to graphing by table is, first of all, to get a letter class by itself. We need to make one clear dependent variable and a clear independent variable. Okay? And so once we get a letter by itself, then we were going to set up the xy table, and we remember we plug in values for which variable class? The independent. Remember, the whole idea of being independent is you can plug in whatever you want. Well, we're going to plug in whatever we want for our independent variable. So when I write down my values, do I write them in the x column or the y column class? In this case, the x is where I'm going to plug them in. Well, technically the x, the negative isn't part of it just yet. And... Um, Normally, I would pick uh, what normal three values because I'm lazy, class. Zero, two. zero, one, and two are my favorites. If I pick zero, that's negative zero plus ten, class. Negative one plus ten. And negative two plus ten. The downside to these numbers may be, it may be a little bit hard to actually fit these on your graph grid. Did anyone have that problem where your graph grid wasn't big enough? to plot like a 0, 10, or anything like that. So you can outsmart that, right? If your graph grid is small, you didn't take up as much room as I did, then maybe you start with a little bit bigger number, like maybe you say 7 so that you get a 3. Maybe you plug in a 5 so you get a 5. Maybe you plug in a 9, well, 9's a big number too. Maybe you plug in a 4 so you get a 6 or something like that, right? You strategically pick numbers that will fit. The nice thing is it doesn't matter which numbers you pick, because as long as it's plotted well, I'm definitely crossing out 0, 10 because my graph doesn't go that high. Um, 1, 9 just barely fits. 2, 8. And I'll just go with uh, 7, 3 as well. All the different points you could use would all connect. I highly recommend it, bringing a ruler with you to class or some form of straight edge so that you could easily connect the dots with a nice straight line. Do you want to try to go through both axes if possible? Now, my graph doesn't go tall enough to actually go through this upper axis. But I can go down through this one. I just want to draw a nice long line. How many had a long line that looked like this? Now again, if your graph was smaller, it may not have actually crossed the axes, a graph like this. Questions on number 13. Yes, sir? Well, how is that graph? Because for some reason, 13 and 16, I did them backwards. You did them backwards. And then I did the Y with the independent and the X. Ah, um, 
Yeah, the, the reason that works is basically the way this equation is set up, Gavin, is that the two numbers would have to add up to a 10, right? Well, when you did it, your two numbers still added up to a 10, even though you put them in backwards, so it happened to give you the same equation. That's not normally going to happen. Hey, this was a really basic equation, so don't count on that happening. But for, I'm glad to identify your mistake, because that'll help you to avoid the mistake in the future. But any other questions, comments on this graph? Let's take a look at number 16. Should have been on the same graph grid, and you're given the equation y is equal to 3x and negative 6. Again, they already got a letter by itself for you. That won't always be the case, but it was done for you. So we can go straight to setting up the x, y table. And... Um, some numbers we might want to plug in here, Maddie. Three, four, and five. We'll look a little more, a bit of variety here uh, as opposed to zero, one, and two. The upside of picking bigger numbers is it'll avoid some negatives, right? You plug in a zero here, you're going to wind up with negative values. But you plug in a three, Maddie, and you wind up with a. You plug in a four, you wind up with a. Since you plug in a five, you wind up with. Nine. Now that might be a little high for some people's graph to fit, so maybe then you do try like a two instead and come up with a zero. I can graph those numbers that Maddie gave me. So I'm going to go and go with the three, three, the four, six, and the five, nine. Okay, but again, a, a two, zero could have also worked. Four things get three points that all line up. And again, try to go as, as long as you can. Go, go to the top, to the bottom, or to the ends of the graph as best you can. I'm going to add a line like this for number 16. All right, and Gavin, if I'm not mistaken, if you did the same thing by plugging in for the wrong letter, I think your graph might have been more like this, okay, um, if you just got it backwards. All right, questions on this? All right, let's take a look at the last two that you had, and then we'll give you a chance to practice just a few more of these for numbers 17 and 20. for number 17 there in the book, Brecken? Uh, now here we see something that I hate, class. Fractions. Fractions. And, um, but uh, to get rid of the fraction would just make a bigger problem later anyway. So, well, I, I say that. I don't know about that. I could clear the fraction out if I really wanted to. Did anyone decide to do that? Just get rid of the fraction? No, you did. Gavin, or Brecken, you did. Multiply everything by... 2. And that would give me 2y two two y equals 2x. The 2 is going to cancel with the 2. Negative 1x, positive eight. 8. Now, the word of caution is if you multiply everything by the LCD, don't screw it up, right? So if you screw it up, it's going to mess everything up. So maybe better to not do this, but you could. And then notice, I just pull a double switch here. Bring the x over as a positive. Now it's by itself as a positive. So the 2y over is a negative, and there's my equation. Or this one. Now there's a difference. If I rearrange it, Noah, what am I plugging numbers in for, the x or the y? The y. The y, because that's the independent variable. So I plug in my 0, 1, and 2 there. If I'm doing it this way, I'm plugging class in for the x. And when I do, if I'm doing it this way, I want to make sure I plug in numbers for x that I can easily take half of, right? Like even numbers. I don't want to plug in a 3 right there. It doesn't, can't take half of 3 easily, but I can take half of an even number easily. So let's show this both ways and show it really doesn't matter. So Maddie, Gavin, both of you just rolled with the equation as given. Did both of you choose even numbers to plug in for x? So um, 0, 2, and 4 maybe? 2, 4, and 6? 4, 6, and 8. All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, I'm a big 0 guy, so 0 becomes a 4. Uh, plug in the 2. I'm taking notice not half of 2, negative half of 2. Half of 2 is 1. Negative half of 2 is negative 1, as the 2's cancel. Negative 1 plus 4 would give us a 3. Uh, you plug in, and Gavin, you had the 2, right? You did 2, 4, 6. When you plug in the 4, that gave you a y value of... 
2. Okay, when you plugged in the 6, Gavin, that gave you a y value of 1. Maddie, when you plugged in the 8, that gave you a y value of 0. And, of course, we could connect these dots here. Um, if I would have started with the 0, 4, the 2, 3, and the 4, 2. Gavin had these two, but he also had 6, 1. Maddie had these two, but she also had 8, 0. And notice it really doesn't matter which of those points you use, right? They're all going to line up anyway, and it works out very nicely. Let's go and take a look at the other method, though, that, um, now Noah, you made some mistakes here, it sounds like. Did you get this correctly done, though? Oh, you did the what they did, okay. Um, if we had done this, though, Noah, if we'd done it correctly, we're plugging in for the y, and give me three numbers. Thank you. Zero, one, two, man after my own heart. So we plug in the zero, we get eight. We plug in a one, we get six. And we plug in a two, and we get four. Now notice, these three points are the same three points we had here, right? So of course it's going to be the same one. Really doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, there we go. I mean, you have this line. Okay, you had an equation mistake, so we already get that. But I like the idea of trying to simplify things. Maddie, what happened to you? You lost your negative. I'm sorry. All right, questions on this. All right, and then number 20 was our last one. Number 20. And uh, what is that equation for number 20, Noah? Plus who? Four. All right. Now here, class, if you were to multiply everything by a 3, I'm just going to show it. 3y equals negative 2x plus 4. Notice I don't have a letter by itself. If I divide away the 2 or the negative 2, I'm still going to have a fraction. If I divide away the 3 back away, obviously I'm back where I start. I still have a fraction. You can't get away from the fraction here is the point. Which is why I don't necessarily recommend doing this because it doesn't always work. If it does, then great. But here we're kind of stuck with a fraction anyway. So here's the, where I recommend just pick strategically. First of all, class, I'm going to plug in for x or y. X. Not because you always plug in for x, but because it's the independent variable. It's the letter that is not by itself. When I plug in for the x, you'll want to make sure that you plug in a value that can cancel with the 3. What's a number that cancels with everything, class? Yeah. 0. I love 0. And if you plug in a 0, where my circle is, um, then this whole thing just becomes 0, and I'm just left with a y value class of 4, because the whole thing just disappears. What's another value that can cancel with a 3? <coughs> Bless you. 3. three can cancel with a 3. And when it does, it gives me negative 2 plus 4, 2. Another number that could cancel with 3 would be 6. And of course, when that cancels, it leaves me with a 2 times the negative 2 gives me negative 4 plus 4, 0. So if I the 6, I get 0. And uh, we could plot those points. Don't have to be those same points. 0, 4 again. 3, 2 just barely misses and six, zero, and we get two lines that look very similar to each other. Just kind of crisscross there right on the y-axis. How many got two lines like that? They got the second line just below the first. All right, questions on this. Now, even if you didn't do that well with your homework, does it make sense now? Are there any questions before we try a few more on your own? All right, do we feel like we understand it now? Even if we didn't on the homework, we feel like we got the hang of it now? Let me give you three more of these to do. And I'll tell you what, if you would, go ahead and get out a pen. So you can use pencil for one line, pen for one line. Now, if you have a blue and a black pen or other colors, get out a couple of pens. Otherwise, just do one of your lines maybe with a dotted or dashed line. But uh, go ahead and get out a couple of writing utensils so you can graph all three of these on the same graph grid. Um, I'm going to pull out a third color of chalk here in a moment so I can do all three of you easy also. All right, so here are the three equations I want you to graph. I'm going to give you a head start, and I'm going to come through and graph them as well. First equation, x equals negative 3y plus 2. 
I'm going to graph that in white. And then 3x plus y equals 5, I'm going to graph in yellow. And uh, let's see, it is uh, February, Valentine's Day coming up on Sunday. So let's go with uh, pink chalk for our third line. x negative 2y equals negative 3, we will put in pink. When you set up your Cartesian plane, give yourself room. You've got three different equations to put on there. Make sure you can put all kinds of different points on there. So I'd go maybe nine in each direction. Give yourself a decently sized Cartesian plane to work with.
the lines a little bit longer as you draw them. Um, if you took just any piece of paper and fold it a couple of times, it's a really nice straight edge. So as you draw, you just light it up. You don't want the pen to come under this way. You should kind of line it up along this edge. And so almost, not quite this pronounced angle, but kind of running it down the edge where it keeps it straight. Get a really nice straight line that way. Bueno. Very good. Are you going to get all the analysis first here in drafting? Comparing your graphs to mine, if they don't match, why not? Look at the points that you had. Yours looks good. Hmm. All of yours look slightly off somehow. Let's take a look at your points and my points. All right, these points match. Ah, okay. So right here, Noah, you plotted your two zero correctly. Then your negative one means go backward one, but it's a positive, which means you have to go up one. You went down. Same thing here. You went backward four, good, but then you went down two. You should have gone up two. And so that would have given you a line. <coughs> Take out the straight edge. Handy. 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 That would have given us that, right? On the uh, the purple one. Oh, okay, same thing with Brecken did. You got a negative y by itself. Well, if you plug in a zero, that gives you two times zero, zero minus five is negative five. But negative five doesn't equal y equals negative y. Then you plug in a 1, well 3 times 1 is 3, minus 5 is negative 2, but negative 2 equals negative y. Plug in a 2, well 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1, but negative 1. So as I told him, don't get a negative letter by itself, make sure it's a positive. Ditch the 3x, make believe the y is a positive. Like here, well, we're going to get to that in a minute. Alright, so that would have changed those points. Here, you didn't get a letter by itself. Y isn't by itself, there's a 2 with it. X isn't by itself, there's a 3 with it, right? Nonetheless, you plugged in 0, 1, and 2, but that wasn't Y, that was 2Y. So Y would have been 3 halves, 4 halves, 6 halves. Well, 2 plus 3 is 5, so 5 halves. Does that make sense? Get, get the letter by itself. So again, um, 
say the same thing I was discussing there for the sake of the video. This X is by itself, life's great. Which letter is easier to get by itself? The Y. And it's a positive Y. So some of the guys moved the Y over as a negative. Well, now the Y is not by itself. There's a negative with it, right? Ditch the 3X to the other side as a negative. Now a plain old ordinary Y is by itself. Here, the X is easier to get by itself. Don't move it, though. It'll become a negative X. Ditch the negative 2Y as a positive. Now the X, a plain old ordinary X is by itself. Does that make sense? I think we need to do one more just to make sure we're good. So draw a fresh Cartesian plane. Let's do one more of these just to make sure we're really good. Had a chance to see some different issues, and that's good. I'm gonna make sure these issues are cured and fixed, though, know, before we take this quiz. One more. And uh, let's see, let's do a uh, negative 4x is equal to 3 minus y. Question, class. Which letter is going to be easier to get by itself, x or y? Good. Now, you might say, well, the x, like, all you have to do is divide away the negative 4, right? Do we see, by the way, the x is not by itself? The x has a negative 4 with it. But if we divide away a negative 4, it's going to make fractions, isn't it? We hate that. Y is easier to get by itself. Question, should I leave the y where it is, or should I move it to the other side? Why should I move it to the other side? Because you don't want it to be negative. You need it to be positive. So, Here's the, here's the thing, if I move it over here, will it be by itself? No, it'll be with a negative 4x, unless we move the negative 4x as well. What will the equation look like now, Noah? Y equals 3 times 4. And now do we see that a letter is truly by itself? All right, so now we set up the xy table. Do we plug in for the x or for the y, class? Why do we plug in for the x class? It's by itself. Now, normally I would like to use what three numbers? Zero, one, and two. Does anyone see a problem with two? We'll plug in the zero, for instance. What do I get? Three. Three. Three plus zero equals three. If I were to plug in a one, what do I get? 3 plus 4 is 7. But if I plug in a 2, uh-oh. What? My graph grids don't usually go that big. What could I do then? I mean, if I keep plugging like a 3, a 4, a 5, it's just going to make the problem worse. I could plug in a negative 1. That would give me what right here, class? Negative 4. Plus a 3 gives us 1. 3 plus a negative 4 is negative 1. Be careful with your signed numbers here. Now, another option, some people might have said, well, what if could you plug in a half? I don't want to plot a half. I mean, I could plug in a half, but I don't want to plot a half. So that's, that's my recommendation there. Questions on that? Now graph it. sheer coincidence, my graph actually does go up to 11 this time. <laughs> but normally it doesn't, so.
when you draw it, you can't come under like this. You're going to have to consciously think, I've got to go over angling it this way. Because you saw what happened. <laughs> Yeah. Bueno. All right, clear your desks, except for one clean sheet of paper, a straight edge of some kind, perhaps a straight edge that I made for you, um, <laughs> or a ruler if you're responsible, like Brett and Gavin. Um, <laughs> Good job, Brett and Gavin. Um, a sheet of paper, pencil, and straight edge. Everything else away. Do not write anything on your paper, because you're going to take your quiz on my quiz copy for a change. Okay, so instead of taking the quiz on your paper, you're going to complete it on my quiz copy. This way, Maddie can't cheat which axis is which. I don't know if there's anything on there, but yeah. <laughs> All right, when you get your quiz copy, there's not actually a blank that says name, but at the top of the quiz, there is space for you to put your name and today's date, so first and last name at the top of your quiz paper. And today's date is 2-10? Yeah, 2 10 Numbers one through 10, you're just going to write the answer off to the side of each question or down below each question. For numbers 11 and 12, you'll want to make sure you mark up those graph grids. They're not ready for you to graph on them. There are things that I say you have to do that haven't been done yet. And then also graph those equations. There's room below each graph grid for you to um, do whatever work you would need to do as far as the table is concerned. All right, you may begin.
in him a minute or so to be finishing up. take a look tomorrow and see how we did. There's no homework this evening, so we'll continue looking at graphing equations, and tomorrow I'll show you a bit of a shortcut that we can use, particularly for equations that just are stuck with those fractions and they're obnoxious, so tomorrow I'll take a look at that, but uh, no homework this evening. We've already started dismissed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.